What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Be Is For Build. I am stoked on this one because in this one we begin the process of going single turbo and doing our stage one power upgrades on this engine. It is the beginning of the road to 500 horsepower for this car. In this one we are going to be focused on the turbo charging system. Stay tuned. Man, I really cannot even tell you guys how good it feels to have this thing back in the shop where we can work on it in an efficient way. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is go ahead and get started with a little bit of tear down. But first, the lift up. So we're gonna go ahead and get the car on the little mini lift, the quick jack, jack the car up, get it at a nice height so I can get underneath. I'm gonna pull the front bumper off and I think that'll give me enough room to get looks at everything. And then we're gonna start over here with the disassembly of the turbo system. Look at this, all of this crap, all these hoses, all these wires, all this nonsense. It can all just go away. It could be gone. I'm excited. Let's get started. Well, it looks like chaos, but progress is just steadily kind of trucking along. So here's one of these like baby turbos. That's what we've been working with. Uh, these are coolant lines right here. I just pulled off the heat uh, shield. That's what you just saw. Um, interesting, because I think, you know, I may need to build another heat shield when we have the new one. I also have turbo blankets, so we could look into that. Uh, anyways, it's exposing a little bit more stuff. My, I mean, I'm really hoping that I'm not gonna have to pull out this whole front clip and the radiator and the everything uh, to get this out of here. Especially hoping I don't have to pull the motor out. Uh, but right now, I, you know, things are, things are looking okay. This is looking, I'm having a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, these, these hoses kind of go back into there into like the mystery land of, of not knowing kind of what's going on. Uh, eventually they run down into a pressure tank that is underneath there uh, that was still holding pressure and operating good when we installed it, so that's good. Um, yeah, lots more bolts to go, lots of stuff. I should go ahead and sneak under there and undo the downpipe as well, so that'll free up the rest of the exhaust from here down, away from the car. That'll free it up from here. And uh, we might be able to just go ahead and see if we can access all the manifold bolts and just uh, pull this baby off. That's my way of saying, I'm just gonna keep on bolting things and soon this will be off. Well, so much time has gone by, I figured I should give an update, although I'm not sh able to show as much progress as I would have wanted to. Uh, it's been like seven hours today that I've been working on this thing, and I've really failed to get it all broken down. I've got all the bolts off the top there of the manifold. Uh, I've got a bunch on, off the underneath. A lot of things were blocking from the underneath, so I've, I've been disassembling it coming from the bottom. Uh, the most recent thing is I just got the part off that does the sequential. That's the actuator for the sequential and that's the blocked port right there that you see, uh, which changes the exhaust gas over and some of this stuff and all that other stuff has been taken off today. So getting closer, uh, hopefully just a few more hours because it's literally been an entire day and uh, so far I haven't been able to get these off. Someone told me that this was very hard to do with the engine in here and I thought, I'm sure it's very hard but it's probably easier than removing the engine. And right about now, I'm starting to doubt myself on that, but uh, we're close, so I'm gonna keep going. Hell yeah, finally got it out. Let me show you guys around. So we got oil lines right here. This, they, they do like a dual oil line setup. So this is coming off the block right here from a banjo bolt right there. This is the drain that goes down and in right there. <clears throat> Same thing here, drain, uh, high pressure line right there from a banjo bolt right there. So we will use one of these and then find figure out our uh, return method. I have to look at the kit. <clears throat> and see what we're going to utilize. We got a water line right here that comes off of kind of tees off of the main water lines for the engine. So that's uh, this is the water line that went to the turbos. This is the water line that goes to the heater core uh, that we don't have. Um, and this is the other return for the water line. Um, or no, this is this was a flow. 
this is where it was going out and then they both actually returned right up here in the neck uh, so I'm talking to uh, Trevor to see um, where he used his and, and how we're gonna throw that on there everything else is looking good across the way here so very very excited uh, a lot of people mentioned that we're supposed to weld these uh, so I heard you loud and clear I will do that and once I verify that the hood closes I'll weld those up uh, so they don't have any chance of moving anymore and that will make the car much more happy I'm sure so lots of time to do this if you have the ability to pull your engine out before doing this stuff definitely take advantage of that opportunity uh, that's probably Trevor right now let me know what the, what we're doing for the water lines so I'm gonna start looking at the kit that we have for water lines and start looking at plumbing all right, fast forward a little bit. It's another day and I've got all the plumbing stuff laid out. I'm really excited because I bought this somewhat generic kit that included a bunch of these different lines and fittings and stuff. And I just bought it from a random eBayer. And so far, everything seems to be really coming together. Like I have all the tools. I think I have all the pieces and parts that I'm gonna need to do this. So I'm really, really excited. This is one of the old oil lines that I pulled off. The only work that I've done since I last showed you was I pulled uh, the, the uh, two lower oil lines off so you had one oil feed from there that's an oil pressure coming from the engine block and then one right here don't know if you can see that right there and then you had the drain line that came around and this is what I did is I ran the drain uh, flange from the kit so this is a threaded uh, flange right here from the kit it's not quite screwed down yet so a brand new gasket and the new flange and that will go into my oil drain line off the turbo uh, so the next thing that I'm gonna go ahead and do now is just go ahead and mock everything up and see where I want to run the lines because I obviously have two different high pressure lines that I can run from. I only have one drain and then I got a strategy for the coolant lines as well. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is, is like uh, n temporarily bolt things up. So I'm going to bolt up the exhaust manifold. I'm going to bolt up the turbo. I'm going to make sure I'm not missing any parts or pieces. And then I'm going to start mapping out the lines, how I want them to run and stuff like that. Make sure everything's going to work out well. And then we'll go ahead and take everything off and bolt it up for the final time. Test fitting went great, I've got a plan. Everything looks great as far as the cooling lines and everything else that we're supposed to do. So a uh, quick rundown of it. Oil line is coming from the front oil uh, pickup. The oil, high pressure oil line runs from down there up around into the turbo right there. Cooling drain line comes down and into the neck right here. That's where the turbos used to go into. There's two because there used to be two turbo cooling lines. We're gonna block off one, go into the other one. Feeding the cooling is coming from right here runs up to right here. So that's where we used to feed the coolant to the, uh, to the single turbo. And then the other coolant line is back there and we'll go ahead and plug that, as well as plugging the other oil line back there. So the lines in the back are the ones that are getting plugged. The lines in the front are the ones that are getting used. And oil drain is that massive stainless steel hose that goes down through there. So everything's looking great. Uh, everything's test fitted up nicely and good to go. So the next thing I'm gonna do is tear it all back down uh, and go ahead and officially mount up the exhaust manifold, which will be a total pain. And then we're gonna move on from there and start like fully mounting these things up step by step probably uh, mount the exhaust manifold and then rebuild or not rebuild the turbo but assemble the turbo so we have the uh, the um, air intake side of it um, the intake housing and on there and we get the lines all ready to go because these banjo bolts need to be on there like that so it's time to get all that done and we'll get it in here I'm aiming for trying to start this thing up and hearing it roar today so I got to keep working quickly but I think it's still a possibility Okay, we're getting close to bolting things up into the car. I got stuck a little bit last night, so I had to take a stop, but we got the whole turbo assembled, water lines, oil drain line, the oil feed line we'll throw in there last um, because it's on the car right now, which is a good transition over here to the car. So uh, permanent plug right here, got to put a little, um, you know what those, the hose clamp on there. We permanently plugged off that thing in the back right there. We're gonna see a hose clamp on there. Where am I pointing? Right, right. Don't worry, I'm a professional. It's right there, it's really hard to see. So that blocks off that water line. We're gonna utilize this water line. Uh, that's the oil feed line that we're gonna use. And so that's why we have a stainless steel uh, line that runs up here and that's what goes into the top of the turbo. The rest of the turbo is all prepped and ready to go. That was the last problem right down there. That's the uh, little banjo bolt. Let me, it's right, right there. 
this banjo bolt. I had to uh, go to the hardware store this morning and get this. So I gotta build a uh, block off bolt. So I'm gonna take this, gotta do some uh, cutting, trim it shorter, and uh, get the threads all cleaned up and everything nice. That will um, go into there and that will stop the oil coming out of there. And obviously we're utilizing the other one. So you can see we're blocking off the water and oil on that side, utilizing the water oil on that side. And then the oil return obviously goes into that down there right there and the water return goes in right here and the turbo is all set up for that water feed water return oil return oil feed goes in the top bing bang boom ready to go so uh, i'm going to make that bolt throw that bolt in there and the next thing you're going to see is i'm going to be throwing the exhaust manifold on uh permanently and then mounting the turbo permanently There we go, that's looking good. Uh, I'm very, very happy we finally got this thing on here. It took a lot of hours to get to this point, but we got the exhaust, or we got the turbocharger on the exhaust manifold and the exhaust manifold on the car, everything permanently bolted up. Next thing I'm gonna move on to working on is the um, external wastegate. So we gotta build that, configure it, assemble it, get it ready to be plugged into our boost controller right here, and then we'll slap it on here. All right, the wastegate is on. I'm not running hoses to it yet until we have the downpipes all sorted out because I don't want to, you know, path the hoses and then find out that one of them is going to melt. So we'll do that uh, tomorrow. So anyways, uh, that's on there and it's all good. It's firmly attached. I did the drain line, which you guys can't see, but that runs underneath and goes straight down a solid braided line into the... Um, side of the car it goes into the original oil drain that the old turbos used to use so that's awesome so the next thing is is we're going to run the water lines um, this one is going to run into the oil feed and then this one is the return and it's going to it's going to return right here that's the game plan right now at least and uh, then the oil feed line will go up there and then the turbo will be fully lined up it'll be all plumb All right, the turbo is all plumbed up. We got oil and water going in and out of the turbo nicely. So that is sweet. Next thing is we're gonna go ahead and install this downpipe. I've installed the, um, the front O2 sensor for the car. This is where the wide band's gonna go once we get it in there. I just wanna say again, thanks to CX Racing for hooking us up with these parts. This, at this point, I've spent a lot of time going single turbo and we haven't even really gotten to the tough, spot, tough stuff, but this is where CX Racing is gonna actually make it easy for me. Uh, so this is an awesome stainless steel downpipe that we're gonna throw in there to the mid pipe that's gonna go further back to our existing exhaust. So huge thanks to CX Racing. Guys, I've told you before, they make a lot of awesome swap parts and just you know racing parts. If you wanna check them out and see what they have for your vehicle, hit the link in the description. Browse around, see what they have. They might inspire you to do something silly like this. That's actually where I got the idea to do this because once I found out they had a swap kit, I was like, it can't be that hard, right? See? Um, so I think I got to feed this in from the bottom. I'm going to feed this thing in from the bottom. It'll bolt onto the back of the turbo like that. And that will be, once I get our wide band in there, that'll be our downpipe set. Got the downpipe installed, everything went nice. It fits great down there, so I had to remove the wastegate to get the downpipe back on, put the wastegate back on. Up here is our wideband, and right there is the vehicle O2 sensor, so that's all good. Next thing we gotta do is run from the intercooler, so you have your intercooler piping right here that's gonna run into the air intake part of the turbocharger right here, so it does a quick 45. I'm gonna have to kinda get that wire away from there. Quick 45, and it'll come out there, and then right here we're gonna put our mass airflow sensor and filter in here, and that will be that. So let's try and get that done so we can start this thing up. Voila, all done. It's the moment I've been waiting for. We've got everything bolted up. Math, 
turbo, pipage to the intercooler. Everything's ready to roll. I finally get to crank this thing back on, see how it sounds, see what it does. So now the downpipe's just going to open air right now. We don't have the mid pipe connected to the exhaust. So expect it to be a little bit louder, especially because there's not two turbos that the air, the gases are going through, it's just the one. Uh, it should be a little bit louder. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm really excited. So let's turn this on. We'll see how we're doing, see how it runs, and uh, verify that everything's good. I also topped off the water and oil system from the stuff that we lost during the, uh, during the old swap -a All right, time for the first startup ever. I hope this works. Dear car Jesus, one time, baby. Fans on, that's a good sign. Let's go. Yeah! It's quite louder also the sound is like bouncing off the ground so let's see what our air fuel ratio comes out to be nice good good uh, rpms holding nicely that's nice all right still running too rich I don't know if you guys can see that there but yeah still running too rich Sounds cool. Actually, I just turned it off, but I want to I want to take a peek at all the turbo stuff, so I'm going to turn it back on. Everything looks good, no leaks, no nothing. Again, just a first glance, we'll need to drive it to tell, but looking good, sounding good. All right, single turbo conversion is done. It sounds great. We're not gonna know exactly how well it does until we get it on the street and hit it in anger, but for now, it's, it's revving up well, it's not leaking, it sounds good, it feels good, so that's a big win in my book. Uh, I wanna say a huge thanks to CX Racing for hooking us up with these parts. That made this swap so, so much easier than doing it all from scratch. Uh, big thanks to them. Guys, link in the description. Please go check that out. Uh, see if there's anything over there that sparks your interest for your next car mod. Um, so what's next is uh, we got to fix that we're running rich. So a lot of people had a lot of comments about um, different things for the, for the game plan of this. And uh, I'll just address both of those right now. So yeah, it's a bad idea to try and like cover up a problem with another thing. So that's not what we're doing. What I wanted to do was replace a lot of parts that were gonna get replaced, like the entire twin turbo system, because you never know, one of those five little vacuum, like the little sensors and stuff could have been broken, a vacuum uh, line could have been, you know, a, a ton of things could have been wrong. Then we started it up with the single turbo and found out, no, it wasn't wrong. What I think is wrong is that we have a 450 liter per hour fuel pump in here and we're still running the stock uh, fuel pressure regulator. So I think what's happening is we are overloading that fuel pressure regulator. It's bringing too much pressure to the injectors, the stock injectors, and they're simply just squirting out more fuel than they're supposed to because they have too much fuel pressure going to them. So I have an aftermarket fuel pressure regulator adjustable on the way. It should be here very, very soon, and that will be the next thing that we do. I'm not going to move on and do anything else until we get that and plug it in and verify that that's going to solve our running rich. So then at that point, we'd have a perfectly good running car at the with the 440 injectors and a single turbo that is the next kind of goal point and then we'll add the new injectors and the safc to bump it up the second thing that a lot of people have been talking about is going to a standalone ecu and i just want to explain that wiring harnesses are not cheap they cost a lot of money they take time to get and standalone ecus that can be tuned locally are also not cheap and they take a lot of time to get and a lot of money tuning when you combine the wiring harness the tuning needed and the standalone ECU, you're gonna be probably at $4,000 at the minimum and a wait time of about two weeks. So being the YouTube life, we don't have two weeks. Uh, also, don't wanna spend $4,000. I mean, that's just, that's more than I've spent on all of this combined. 
So I'm not spending $4,000 on that if we have even a small chance to get the SAFC to work. I spent $200 on that. So $200 versus $4,000, I'd rather just give the $200 thing a try versus the $4,000 thing. So that's what we're doing. That's why I'm trying the SAFC. I get that a lot of you guys want me to do that, but my, the way that I do things on BS for Build is not throw money at it first and then think maybe I could have done it cheaper later. I always try the cheap option first. And there are plenty of people on plenty of forums that have plenty of these cars that run this thing and they, they run fine with it. So we're not really trying to go up that much higher, guys. A 440cc to a 550cc injector is not a huge jump. If we're gonna do 1,000cc injectors and go for like six, seven, 800 horsepower, obviously that would never work. But that's not what we're trying to do here. 500 is my goal. That's the idea. So uh, I hope I could address those things all right. The other really weird thing is, is I know it's the middle of summer, but I came down with a cold over the last two days while I was shooting this pretty much in the middle. I've gotten pretty sick. I don't feel very well. So I'm gonna take the next few days as a time to uh, recover a little bit, relax, and wait for the um, adjustable fuel pressure regulator to come in the mail. As soon as that comes in, I should be feeling better. Chelsea got me sick, so she's already better, so I'll be better soon. And, uh, and then uh, I'll throw that on the car and hopefully the, all the air fuel and everything will be magical and happy again. Now let's not get ahead of ourselves. There's still some serious work to be done. We gotta mount the intercooler uh, the right way. We gotta build a front impact bar for safety. We gotta do a little bit more cooling upgrades. We gotta finish the exhaust and some other things like that. Then the injectors, then the more power, then hopefully a dyno run or some sort of a tune run. And then we'll be on the road to California. But I'm hoping there's like about a week to a week and a half left of this build. And that's where I'm at right now. Anyways, we went single turbo. We've done it. I'm very happy about that. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like BS for Build, you want to help out and support, head over to bsforbuild.com, scroll down to the shop. Picking up any of that stuff directly helps us and supports us to do these projects. Um, we are completely crowdfunded, so you guys, you know, interacting with advertisements, watching the ads, uh, and, and, and picking up merchandise is how we stay alive. So thank you guys all so much that already do that. Um, what's the other thing I say? Oh yeah, we're everywhere now. Uh, BS for Build on Twitch. I've been doing some Twitch streams, and now that I'm sick, I might do even more lately. Uh, we got um, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat. We're on all those things as BS for Build. Instagram is the one that I would advise because that's the one I'm most active on. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope you guys are happy with this upgrade. We're going to make a lot more power. I'll see you guys in the next one. Please remember to like and subscribe. Peace! <laughs>